is AI video ready for prime time? Whether we're talking about text to video, video to video, image to video, whatever you want to call it. Can we use AI to create a video that's worth sharing with the world? This is an important question because a large percentage of the news that comes across my desk is all about this one question. We're going to answer it in this video. Now, before we get started, I want to make it clear that my focus is, as always, only on practical application. I don't care if something's cool. If you can't use it to grow your business, I don't want to cover it on this channel. So this is going to be a quick roundup video. This is mostly focused on news. I'll show you how to use the top AI image generation tools right now, how to get a sense of where the market is without having to spend a lot of time learning because I don't want you to learn how to use a tool that's not ready for prime time. It's a waste of your time. And then by the time it is ready for prime time, they'll probably change the way you prompt with it anyways. So I want to make sure that we use your time efficiently. So this video is not meant to be a long one, but I am going to go through the state of AI video right now, going through several different tools. And before we get started, as always in the comments below, you can see a link to get a copy of my bestseller, ChatGPT Profits, absolutely free. And of course, you can also get access to the Midjourney Visual Dictionary, which is my Midjourney prompting software to help you generate amazing images, absolutely free. It's a tool that I spend a lot of time maintaining, updating for my own use, and I want to give you access to it just for, thank you for spending time watching my videos. Now, the First thing I want to talk about is my overall strategy. When I think about use for a video, the first thing I look at is what is the brand or the company or the software, whoever's making it, showing publicly as their best examples. Because that's really where you're going to get the best of the best. And same thing, whenever you watch a commercial, right? You watch a commercial for a movie or a video game, they're going to show the best part of the movie, the best part of the video game, not the middle of the road or what an average person is able to generate. The second thing I look at is how long are those pieces of content. Because a commercial needs to be 30 seconds and a television show, let's say you're doing a cartoon television show, those are 22 to 24 minutes long once you take away commercials for a 30 minute show. So if I'm only able to get one second at a time, two seconds at a time, three seconds at a time, I have to generate hundreds of these tiny clips and try to sew them together. That's a huge amount of work. So I'm really looking for, is this something I can use practically? Even if I want to use something as a TikTok video, TikTok video really needs to be around 15 seconds, at least when I create content. And I look at, well, is that really something that's worthwhile if I'm making five three-second videos, I have to sew them together. That's a lot of work. Now the AI is not being helpful for me. So the first thing we're going to talk about is pica. Maybe it's called pica because I know pica is the name of a disease. And in pica has just gone beta the whole world. So I've had access for a long time, but just a couple of days ago, they said anyone who wants to can have access at their website. I'll put the link right below this video. Uh, it's at pica.art. I'll show that to you in a second, but this is their Discord server, and this is where all the nerdiness happens. This is where I spend a lot of time seeing what people are generating, and so we can see examples. This is their showcase. So this is where people are generating whatever, but when someone makes something they're proud of, they share it here. So this is the stuff people think is so good, it's worth showing. Um, uh, this is one of the better ones. So watch this. This is a woman floating in space. It's pretty good. It's only three seconds long. Like it's pretty easy to make a three second animation that's pretty good. Now, at 30 frames per second or 24 frames per second or 29.7 frames, or does, I don't know exactly what they're using, whether they're using uh, American or European numbers, but usually films are around 30 frames per second. I think in England it's 24. So that means that we have somewhere between 80 and 90 pieces generate the motion and you say well how many of these would i have to put together to make a movie quite a lot it's okay though it does look nice but it's very short let's look at another example what i want you to think about is these are designed to be circles what we're really seeing what i'm noticing a lot i'm going to show you a lot of examples with these videos with all different platforms is they're really gifs a gif just like a tiktok right a tiktok works well or any vertical video when you don't realize it's finished and you start watching it over again. That's how TikTok's algorithm is designed. So if someone, if you have a 15 second video, people watch 16 seconds because they don't realize it's restarted. That's enough for you to go viral if everyone falls for that. So that's what's happening here is these GIFs that can be on a screen and they're a loop more than they are a linear piece of content. So does the end look like the beginning? Even in these three second clips, that's what I'm feeling. Let me see if there's any other. Here's a picture of a house. What we're seeing is the camera move forward like two feet, like two feet towards the house. Uh, I can make it big if you guys want to see it really big, if that's better. Here's someone doing kissing. And I want you to watch this one because this one is especially very circular. 
Mouths obviously look really weird. It, they didn't pull that part off very well. There's some fuzziness down here, but overall, fine, right? This is an okay video, but let's just watch it again. Can't really tell when the beginning and the end is. So I can actually start at the beginning, slide around. See, I can slide forward and backwards, forward and backwards, and it doesn't feel like there's a beginning and an end. Even the floating um, heart in the sky, very circular, very jiffy, which is fine, because that's where we're going to actually use this content as part of our strategy. So if you're thinking about creating, oh, I'm going to create an entire faceless YouTube channel, you're not. That's a waste of time. The only thing that's working is what I was teaching a year ago, which is you take a picture and you just make the mouth move and it seems like it's talking and there's very little movement and it's an AI voice. And you've seen a couple of those where people have a historical figure telling stories. That's all that's really possible. And those images aren't moving, right? Someone's sitting still and this, their mouth is moving. And actually, if you look too closely, it does fall into the uncanny valley. So this is what people are generating, think it's the best of the best of the best. And you can watch, oh, let me see. Oh, here's one that's seven seconds. So sometimes they make clip that's slightly longer. And I'm not saying that it's bad, but I would never mistake that for a television show. And that's the bar I set it for, is would I think a real artist had made this? So before we move past Pika, uh, I do have an example video for you. So here's a video clip that I made. And this is uh, from an image that you may have seen from one of my videos recently, Man Running From Helicopter, and there are some parts that are very good. Over here, very good, right? The fragments moving away from the helicopter exploding. The man, the wind around him is okay, but if you watch the mouth and the eyes, it's unnatural. So because Lennox it lets me watch my own video, it lets me watch it on a loop, I can really tell. You can see that you can add and up it from three to seven seconds if you want, but this is not good enough, right? Everything happening in the face really messes it up. The eye disappears for just a moment. If you watch carefully, the left eye, this one right here, watch it disappear. There it goes. <laughs> disappears for a couple of frames. It's just enough to be haunting. So just be aware that there's limitations, right? It hasn't solved that because even we've all seen a lot of people posting text to image that's not very good. So this is as far as Pika can go. Let's see how the competition is. Now, the other big uh, piece of news this week is Leonardo. If you've seen my other video on Leonardo, you can see my demonstration, but I'm gonna show it again here. If you notice most of Leonardo's videos, the background is moving just behind the people from sideways. So let's let it load and you can see it's kind of got a Cancelvania image here. I took an image and when you work with Leonardo, you don't do any prompt. All you do is give it a scale of one to 10 for how much motion you want, like how, and they call it motion and it's just a scale of one to 10. This is a five. Here, what we can see it's really interesting is on the city i was hoping it would be um the cars would move and the people would move in the street and things would be happening but actually what you just see is wiggling and then sideways motion this is a 10. here this is a one and at first i didn't notice what was happening until i zoomed in but i want you to watch the clouds what's happening here is very subtle but it's actually very good because you won't notice it at first. What this reminds me of is in Scooby-Doo when they're walking past a picture and the eyes follow them. And at first you don't notice it and then you do on the second watch and then it's all you can think about. So this is very subtle. This is something that I would use more because this is not trying to be more than it is. This is a tiny movement in the background. In fact, if you've seen uh, displays, everyone advertises displays. There are those uh, metal posters, like custom metal posters you put on the wall. They now have a version that has like uh, an LED in the background that's three or four times, maybe it's 10 times the regular price or a couple hundred dollars instead of like $50. And that's what they have is like a tiny subtle LED in the background, same thing. It's not overpowering, it's subtle and that can be very effective. So this is what Leonardo's doing. Better example here is this image of a dark silhouette with flames. You watch the flames, they're close. It's the right idea. So this one's not going left to right. It did catch the right idea considering I can't do any prop, but it's not there yet. It's okay but it doesn't look natural, it doesn't look quite right. This reminds me of when I saw short films in the late 90s, early 2000s, and they were using fire, right? Back when everyone first got access to fire on their home computer setups, right, in After Effects, and it just never, it wasn't quite there yet, but it was obviously they couldn't afford to do a practical effect because it was an independent movie or student film, and that's the level it was at. So this is not terrible, but it just shows us, okay, it's not ready. Right. This is not ready for putting in a movie. This is not ready for putting in a commercial. It's not ready for putting on social media. This is still not there yet. It is moving forward. Like they have made progress, but I care about practicality. The only video that's really came out useful to me is this one of this lady. And that's because it never crosses into the uncanny valley. It's interesting. At the end, it looks like she's transforming into something. Her eyes turn black. 
very interesting, but it's just a loop, right? It's not something that you could see, oh, this would be a scene in a movie or part of a commercial. So you have to keep that in mind when you're watching all these videos. So I want to show you next after here. Now, the cool thing about Leonardo Pica is totally free for three second clips, but they brand it. Leonardo, Leonardo you get 25 credits it costs to make each image into a video and you get 200 free credits a day so you can generate images on monday and then make turn them all into videos on tuesday and play around with these tools but i don't think it's a great investment of your time yet because they're just not there yet they will be eventually but for focusing on growing your business not quite where we want it to be next we have stability ai i'm a huge fan of most ai image generation is built on top of stability they've done some amazing things but let's look at their four examples this is the best of the best this is their commercial right the car going down a road, it's a train moving halfway across the screen, it's a man looking, and then it's a robot that they're panning around. These are cool and interesting, but not useful. So the best of the best of what they're showing, again, they're showing, oh, we can do it two to five seconds, and we can do up to 30 frames. So in the best world, they can generate 150 frames. And what you'll find is that each frame is generated as a separate image. That's why there's like wonkiness or like wiggling because there's not consistency between the frames yet. We'll get there someday, but this is, again, as far as it's going. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is Gen 2. This is from Runway ML. This is kind of considered to be the gold standard of video generation right now. This is considered the best. This is when people talk about the best of the best, they're talking about Runway ML. So we can watch their examples and be careful. Very easy to go, oh, look how cool that is. But would it actually, in a movie, would you go, oh, yeah, that looks like a real volcano? The beach is okay, but how hard is it to get a, like stock footage of a wave, right? So a lot of what happens is it's not really motion, so it's like a still camera, and they're just the front and the back foreground are moving like sideways away from each other. That's all that's happening. So this is as good as Gen, Gen 2 gets. I don't want to spend too long on this, right, because I don't want to make you think, oh, I should go and learn all these things. Um, the final tool I'm going to show you is Leapix. Leapix does not make any claims. So this is Leapix. You'll notice I'm not going to look at the screen because Leapix, unlike, unlike Leonardo, which moves the background from side to side, Leapix takes the two characters and moves them in a circle. You can actually change the animation style into different types of circles, vertical perspective. I get dizzy. Let me see. Even if I do horizontal where it's just doing side to side, it's not the same as what Leonardo does because it doesn't do a long pan. It just goes back and forth. It kind of reminds me of those pop-up books I had as a kid where you pull the tab out and the character moves back and forth or the house pops up and closes and pops up and closes. So I have used these to great effect. I can tell you right now that I've used Leia Picks in the past. It's free. It's a very simple tool. I don't know how their credit system work. I've never run out of credits. I don't pay that much attention to it because I don't animate that many images. But when I use one of these types of images for the background on a Pinterest pin, it gets way more attention than a static version of the same image. So I have tested that. I believe that is where AI image generation is right now. So each of these different tools has a free level. Um, when you do layer picks, they don't put uh, an image on it. Like they don't put that. Pika puts like Pika on the corner of it. See. And I actually think this looks cooler, but not, but also faker. So that's the thing. I think this is my, sorry, I think Leapix is more practical. Leapix has been around. I've been using this for like more than six months. I've talked, I talked this a while, I've been talking recently, but it very much catches your eye. The loop is really tight because it knows what it is. It's a GIF and it's acting like a GIF. And when you download it, you can even download in that format. It doesn't pretend to download like a three second video format because you don't need that. So it doesn't kind of pretend to be more than it is. So this is really the state of AI video generation. Where it's useful is anywhere that you can post a GIF, which is just a moving image. Don't think of it as ready for video yet. That's where you'll start to fall into what's just not possible. The only people that are watching AI videos are people that think AI videos are cool and sharing it and saying, oh, the technology is better than it is when it's not. So we want to be really practical here. It's very important to me to share with you guys what's absolutely useful. I consider of all the tools, Leia picks to be the most useful because it's really easy to uh, make changes. Uh, one of the things that's very helpful is that a uh, video clip, a uh, GIF, we upload a GIF to um, Pinterest needs to be seven seconds. So you can actually make it seven seconds by doing that, uh, which is very nice. You can move the focus point around. It's hard for me to do this. Um, 
Leah Picks does make me really dizzy, and I don't want to throw up onto the microphone while I'm making this video, but that's how good it is. It has a really simple process that tells you what it is. You can mess around with all these settings. If you have like a stronger <laughs> inner ear than I do, you can really have some fun here. You can play around with a depth map and to see all this stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna go back. It's too much for me. It does make me feel really dizzy. So this to me is probably the only two you should play around with because it, it's not gonna tempt you try and do a bunch of really cool stuff that's beyond what the technology is capable of right now. This, to me, Leopix, which has not changed much, they've added minor features over the past six months, but they haven't done big changes, so I still think they're the best because they don't pretend to be something more than they are. All these other tools eventually will surpass Leopix when AI video gets there. Maybe it'll take six months, maybe it'll take six years, I don't know. But right now, the really cutting edge stuff to focus on is text generation and image generation. Until image generation is amazing, video generation won't be there because all video generation really is is generating 30 images per second, right? So just 30 times more work for every second you generate. And it's going to take a long time to get there. So don't worry about that. Hope you found this roundup useful. We talked about Pika. We talked about Leonardo. We talked about stability video. We talked about um, Runway ML. And we talked about Leopix. Hope you guys found this useful. If there's a video editing tool that I didn't talk about that you want me to talk about for adding motion to AI generated images, let me know. I love talking about tools and I always want to share with you guys my research to save you as much time as possible. I hope you guys found this interesting. Remember, you can get a free copy of my book and my free gifts right below this video. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Jonathan Green, host of the Artificial Intelligence Podcast, and I'll see you in the next video.